All right. That is why we save, everyone. That is why we save. Oh, boy. All of a sudden, I saved that thing, and all. Of, we're going to see if I if I load this tool. Is what I'm going to do. I uh, I felt things were feeling a little weird there, and so I wanted to make sure I saved. And I hope it does. I hope it did save. I think we lost too much, if anything, though. We lost a little bit, but not too much. That's okay. That's all right. Ooh, sorry about that, everyone. My whole PC locked up on that save. I clicked save, and it went, and then the whole thing shut down. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Yeah, random. Random for sure. Um, anyways. Hello, where were we at? I don't remember what we were talking about because of that, but uh, I'm going to duplicate this arm over and hope it doesn't crash on me again. Or maybe that's the universe telling me, don't duplicate this arm over. Uh, I probably lost like 10 minutes of progress. Not too bad. All the stuff that we did on the helmet is still there. All the stuff on the abs is still there. The, the bulk of the work we did here is still there. So it's kind of just like, you know, a little bit of stuff here and there. Uh, let's see. Questions that are coming in as we chat. Have I ever 3D printed any of your models? How does Nomen have... Uh, classes on 3d printing and junk account is also actually what type of drawing tablet are you using we'll answer that one quickly uh yes i am using a wacom intuos 5 large size um and yes uh, andrew i save a bunch of different um i save a bunch of different versions i'm gonna see if i have something right here yeah Asking about 3D printing. Yes, I have 3D printed my models before. Working at um, Legacy FX, I also did a lot of 3D printing there. Uh, so I kind of transition over to the single shot. You can see uh, this is really dusty, so I apologize in advance. But this is a this is a, an Iron Man that I printed from an Iron Man Mark VII. Uh, so I we ended up doing one of these for. Um, the Avengers, we did one of these that was half scale. So half scale, meaning it was three feet tall. And so I got, got one of my own printed. And so I have, um, you know, I got his arms here too. So you can like, it's been a while. It's been about nine years since this was done. But like, you know, you can put his little arms on, right? You can put his little legs on and all that stuff too. But yeah, I have I've done a lot of 3D printing. I haven't done any of it too recently. Uh, and currently, Noman does not. Currently, no one does not have a 3D printing class, but it's definitely something we're looking into uh, for sure. So, yeah, good question. All right, back to this. Well, I probably want to get rid of those quick saves at a certain point. I have a feeling that's definitely slowing down my computer. All right, so again, welcome back. If you guys are just joining because you got a push notification about the, this stream being up or something for the first time, uh, hello and welcome to an art jam. Uh, my name is Josh Herman. I'm the CCO of Nomen. And uh, we're just going to try to get a little bit more work on the Samus done. Today we've done, basically the top is mostly done. We did this rib cage. Uh, probably focus a little bit more on the hand, even though the reason that we're back is because we just crashed working on this hand. So I'm a little hesitant. To be frank, so that's good. Um, yeah. What's uh? What's some movies, games, projects, TV shows? What's something that that people are excited about that's coming out soon? I just saw that the Foundation trailer came out. I, I haven't seen that yet, and uh, I want to. I'm super excited for Dune. Jared Krzyzewski is here. Hello, Jared. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, thank you so much for doing that info session. If you guys haven't seen the info session with Jared, it was uh, done last Friday, I believe. So please take a look at that. Um, 
Very thoughts on our instructors here. An amazing creature character concept artist. So, let's see. Cyberpunk, yeah, everybody's super stoked about Cyberpunk. Last of Us 2 for sure. Yeah. PS5 Unreal 5. Am I going to make a gun road tutorial anytime soon? Asked the Fallen King of Bavaria. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think I will probably, if you guys are interested in certain topics, I'm using, currently we're using ArtJam just to kind, of, to kind of have like a regular creative session for Nomen that's not really... So if you have questions, uh, Kingdom of Bavaria, like if you're interested in certain things, maybe we can try to get an art jam that's about that. But it's not going to be like a, a gum road. Michael Keaton being Batman again, possibly. That would be awesome for sure. I think I saw that they were doing that or that was a plan. This hand is really jacked up though, isn't it? I should probably bring in another hand or sculpt another hand because I think those fingers are welded together. I think I'm 90% sure I did that. Yeah. Oops. I have to fix that at some point. Yeah, I have some projects that I want to I want to work on in Art Jam. So this is one of those projects. This is that Fan Art 6 I was talking to you a little bit about before. Um, and I think once I get this piece done, and maybe this piece, but realistically just this piece. Uh, I'm going to start thinking about posing. Uh, Lee Gibbons from YouTube asks, how do you decide when to use Dynamesh or just subdivisions? Uh, for me, I prefer to use uh, Dynamesh to create a, a base and then start adding subdivisions to that. Uh, at that point, you can also do use Z-Remesher, which I think is a, a superior thing. Um, so, yeah. No eternal truth. You're awesome. All right. Um, yeah, again, we have um, Adam and Ray are in the chat and also Miranda from. More events, programs, anything like that, shoot them a question. Uh, and they can also help you out, uh, forwarding you on to our admissions team. If you have any questions about Nomen stuff, you know, you're interested in taking a Nomen class, go, doing a Nomen full-time program, get in touch with our admissions team early, 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 early. Uh, it's We don't have a normal admissions cycle and we don't have a normal academic calendar. We work on quarters. So if you're interested, uh, definitely take a look. Um, BMAG Art asks, are character artists required to do topology in Maya? Uh, no, they're not. Typically, especially just the retopology part, you're just required to retopologize. Um, 
especially character artists. Typically, the term character artist refers to game artists. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, games are going into uh, an engine. That's where it's really being rendered. So if there's a, a specific need, it needs to, to be imported from that engine. But that doesn't really matter where you do your retopology. If you want to study at Noman, is there any uh, special requirements? No, not really. I mean, you, we do have an application process, um, and we are pretty stern and rigorous on our application. You know, we 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 look for talented people, right? Who we think would be great, and so I guess if there's one part of this that is the the special requirement, it's you need to be an artist, you need to be a good artist, and um, the only way to, to kind of start that conversation is talking to our admissions team. If you want to take online courses, uh, there's not a lot of special requirements there. And our upcoming term starts very, very soon. Very soon. So. Um, you know, if you uh, are interested in taking an online, online class with Noman uh, because of COVID and the whole situation, uh, we'll have a lot of online classes so uh, that are upcoming soon. So um, take a look at that. Sorry, just checking chats. Uh, Noma does not currently offer a master's program. We do offer a bachelor's program, though. Yes. Have I seen the Unreal 5 demo? What would change in terms of workflow for artists in the future, in your, my opinion? That's a really hard question. I think every, I think everybody's looking at the unlimited poly count view, and I think that's obviously going to be an element to it, right? Um, you know, for you can't have unlimited polygons on a character, uh, mostly because of rigging. You know, you can get up to it, right? But uh, you have to rig the character typically at a lower subdivision level than the, the max, and you can then transfer it over and over and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I think poly count is going to be the big thing that everybody's looking to. That and the obvious bounce light. The bounce light stuff is incredible. Super excited to see what happens with that. Delete the higher subdivision here because it has all these little artifacts in it. I'm just going to create a new one. Let's see. Oh, uh, Kellen Mirthen from YouTube is asking, uh, when creating an application portfolio for Nomen, would you recommend including a large variety of work or only focusing on adding pieces that reflect the specialty you're looking to go into? I would have a large variety of work. I, I, we want to see um, at least 15 to 20 pieces of artwork for you. So if you have 15 to 20 that only focus on your specialty, then sure. But I think it's better to start that conversation with uh, uh, admissions. Again, you can't apply. The, the application process is number step one, speak to admissions. So you can't apply really until you speak to admissions. So I, what I would do is I would talk to admissions and I would say, here's all my work. What would be the best stuff for my portfolio? And they're also going to give you feedback to say, here's some things that you should probably work on for your portfolio. Start there. <clears throat> Let's see, Armando, hello. Uh, has COVID affected the demand for CG artists? That's a really hard one. You know, I think there's a lot of people working from home, but there's a lot of stuff happening in studios now and, and things, you know, affecting. It's just really hard. I think it's really, that's a really hard question to answer because it's such an unknown. Uh, COVID in general is such an unknown. Um. Hello. Hello from India, Eternal. Um, yes, somebody asked about international students, but yes, Adam already got that. We do accept international students. 
I remember in my term, at the final of my term, um, we had only five people in my term because I graduated a long time ago, but um, there was someone from India, someone from Romania, and someone from Italy. So definitely, definitely international students. So I really like using Lazy Mouse for this type of work because you can get such clean lines. I'm trying to create lines that go from uh, both lines and details and forms that create uh, a visual arc. So you see I'm using this little detail line, but also this um, some detail here so it sticks a little better. This uh, form on her hip to go up through all these lines and kind of go up and out through the body. Uh, this program, uh, Storm of Blades, is ZBrush. Uh, we, Comic Legends, we will still continue to have online classes, but it won't be all the classes that we've been having. This is kind of a limited time thing. Right, almost done with these abs, and we got about forty-five minutes left in this. We're we're streaming till one p.m. today is Pacific time. Uh, so if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to ask them. Whether they're about Nomen, whether they're about things, if you just want to talk about games, whatever's coming out, I'm always happy to talk about that. We use Blender at Nomen. Uh, no, we do not use Blender at Nomen. Uh, we have we have been thinking about potentially teaching classes on on Blender because it seems to be a real big conversation recently. Um, but we mostly focus on uh, what the industry is needing. And so, if the industry is um, if the industry really starts kicking into Nomen and starting into Blender, then we'll teach it at Nomen. But for now, uh, we have not. Now the industry is doing it more on the concept side right now. I'm seeing a lot more on the concept side, but not necessarily for for production. All right, so I'm gonna save this and we're gonna hope that we don't have our computer crash again. Great, success. I'm going to load up the previous one. One of my favorite things about ZBrush is you can kind of see befores and afters, right? So you'll see, I'll just select this. So the highlighting is the same. And what you see is um, this is the kind of the areas we focused on. Again, highlighting should be the same. So everything's just a little bit tightened up. Uh, let's see. Muhammad, uh, do you... Uh, basically, I think you're asking how much do I adjust focal shift, intensity, and draw size. I very rarely address, adjust the focal shift. I very often adjust the intensity, and all the time I adjust draw size. So intensity is obviously like the pressure. It's more or less like the pressure you're putting down. The focal shift is the, the width of the brush inside of the sphere that you're sculpting in, and the draw size is the size of that sphere. So I very, very often will adjust the draw size. In fact, I do it all the time, um, but not very often with the other two. 
which is needed more in the industry, environment artists or character artists for 3D? Uh, both. They're both needed. Think of any game film you're interested in. They're both all over the place. Environments are all over the place and characters are all over the place, so they're both needed. Um, just doing some Googling, finding Samus images. I'm going to get a little bit of reference. Thinking of what a good pose for this character could be, you know, I think something like this with the, like, you know, the classic hand on bicep gun up image could be nice. Uh, as I kind of showed you guys earlier, earlier, I'm doing a three to one composition. This front one could be good, which is also kind of like that. Um, I want something that's kind of more, you know, aggressive, I think would be nice. These are always nice, the like shooting ones. I've, I've done some tests with this before, and it looks pretty good. But um, pointing the gun outward doesn't fit into a taller uh, aspect ratio, which becomes a challenge. For sure. I use T-pose for per poses. Yeah, definitely. Tobias uh, from YouTube asks, do you have any... Uh, tips on staying consistent in creating the the only thing i can really say is that you just need to keep it up like it, it's like having that accountability partner having somebody who's going to keep you uh moving right i think is a really big part of that uh, and that can be sometimes uh, that's actually why i i like challenges i like art challenges i like art com art competitions because um What's up, Phil? Um, I like these challenges because, you know, it keeps you accountable. You got to do the challenge. That's why I like those things. All right, let's save this one last time. And we're just going to go ahead and start ideating on some pose stuff. I think that'll be good. Um, Senor Flomas asks, are big studios even looking for generalists or only specialists? Still not sure what to specialize in. Uh, on average, a big studio will uh, will make, will have specialists, like the average, you know, you're going to have your textures, your modelers, your rigging, your lighting. Um, but it, there are some studios who, who do value um, your generalists. So I think... You know, but I think on on average you'll kind of see that that uh, specialists are are mostly what's needed and where things are got we're at. Have I ever considered making my own indie title? Yeah, of course I've considered making my own indie title. I just I'm really bad at coding, um, so yeah, but I have all kinds of ideas. You know, I have a whole journal of game ideas and stuff like that that I someday would like to see if I could do. Uh, I started to be more interested in tabletop games just because it removes the coding element. And again, as I've said, and will continue to say, I'm a really big tabletop fan. So big, big, big fan of that stuff. Let's see, refreshing some of these pages. Sorry. We're about to jump into doing some... Uh, jump into doing some posing. So we'll be doing that in just a second. All right. All right, so posing, the way that I like to do posing, there's a, there's a couple things and there's one little tip I guess I'll share with you guys. Um, Posing, I always use T-Pose Master, which is under Z plugin and you're gonna see T-Pose Master here. You hit T-Pose Mesh, which shifts everything down. Right. The other thing I very, very often like to do, and you can use tools, uh, but this is also why I like to save before I do this. Uh, save your save your tool. And go into project. Go to mannequins. Mannequins are right here, and there's a bunch of them. There's an eight head female which has been made. When you create a new, when you open a new project, it erases everything you have up on your your ZBrush. So that's why I just saved three or four times just to make sure. Right. This is a, a mannequin. You know, I can adjust some of these things, right? I can draw some elements off on this thing. So I might make some shoulder pads out of this in a second. But what I like to use these mannequins for, I like to do and test poses. So this pose is something where they're kind of holding this gun up, gun arm up. 
you know, straight in front. And then this arm is kind of like here. Rotate that bad boy over, flop it. It's a little bit of like a Macarena situation. I think that's what that kind of looks like. A little bit. This arm feels like it should be going a little higher. It's going to stick past the head. We're in front of the body. And so the uh, the ratio that I'm talking about, in case you guys haven't seen, is I'm doing a... Oh, nope, 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 nope. I'm doing a width 500. I'll triple this when I do the, or quadruple this when I do the final one. Height 1500. I'm more or less doing a, a series of posters, posters, quote unquote, that are super vertical like this. So this is what the, the size and type of the poster would be. So what I'm doing is I'm, it's really quick and easy for me to take and adjust some of these uh, focal lengths so it's a little not so fish-eyed. And I'm going to put it here, and I'm, I'm more or less using this as an idea to, to figure out, this is kind of what the pose looks like, right? But this way, I can I can figure out if this pose is going to work in this aspect ratio for me before I get into the actual thing, right? So maybe it's, she's got her head turned. She's got her head turned, maybe. Uh, Samus also has these big shoulder pads, so it might be worth drawing out some shoulder pads. Oh, I should have had symmetry on. These big old cones. To kind of get a, again, this is, this is weird looking, but it is kind of, oh geez, useful to uh, understand what this is going to look like. Not exactly what it's going to look like, obviously, but we're getting there. Just using them as spatial relationships so that I know where these things would roughly be. You know, this this is where the challenge I've had with this uh, ratio is, is that I'm often trying to make something work for a specific poster size, and that's really challenging, whereas for an, a, you know, an overall thing, it might be fine, but I might not even see the legs here. Right now I could do something that's a little further and that might be cool. You know, maybe I put this arm down, you know, put this hand on top of the gun, put a leg forward like they're bracing for it or something. When posing. Is it get higher? Is it question we're getting from uh, Bread Nine Fifty One on Twitch? Is it harder to get hired now or back in the day? I don't. I don't think there's not really a difference from what I can tell. Armando asks, when it comes to design, do you have any pro tips on how to make sci-fi armor believable when it comes to movement? Uh, I think there's not really a pro tip aside from just think about how it would move. Think about how it would move and and figure that out. And that's really the only way you can. Make it work is try to try to imagine how that thing would move and go from there. That arm is broken. See, like even this pose, which is kind of more akin to like not necessarily this one, but there's somewhere kind of something like this. Um, yes, you can't use man a mannequin as a rig, I think, or you can create a Z sphere rig, but you know, I'm trying to get something here that's like you know, really this kind of thing. And I think this is a cool pose, 
but it doesn't it's really hard to get to work in this you know, like maybe they're like leaned back do this or gun's gonna be way in the way and I'll give you guys an example. I think I've already done a couple of these before. Um, let's just search this as I see if this finds anything. Yeah, so I've already done a couple of these. Uh, I'll show you guys these on a, you know, this is kind of like a standing pose. Uh, this is like a, Oh, something's above me pose, right? And then there's a shooting pose. Right? So this is kind of that pose that we're getting to. So just to kind of cooking show you how I would get to that point uh, between any of these. The challenge I have with this is this needs to like, maybe this is kind of cool where it's like super close on her. Uh, I am modeling in in uh, symmetry metal dragon, but right now we're just working on some pose. So I'm trying to find a composition that can work here. I do think even something like this could just be fine, right? It's kind of a standing traditional pose. So I might uh, default to something like that. Brian Winia, hello, Brian. Hope you're doing good, man. Uh, Brian Winio was one of the first people, or the first person that, person that I ever started teaching with. Brian is an excellent teacher and a super good uh, ZBrush creature character artist, concept artist. So for me, what I would normally do is I would at this point kind of start taking some of these and... Um, doing some screenshots of it. So exporting this, seeing what I think works. You know, like this is interesting, I guess. You know, this is something we could play with. That means I have to basically model the entire middle of this gun, which is fine. I, I don't think you really get like the, you know, the whole vibe of the character too well. But we'll have to play around with this not going to be able to get a pose today, I don't think, unfortunately. But we got some things we can play with. All right, let's just go back to our normal window size. Thank you. We'll get rid of this gradient because I hate it. Uh, choose another mat cap. And we'll uh, back up our Samus. There she is. Any tips to make a portfolio that would get me hired? Uh, that's a good, I don't know what you're looking to get hired at, so I can't give you tips on that specifically. Um, but generally, my number one piece of advice is don't make them ask questions. Don't make the person who's reviewing your portfolio, who's looking to uh, hire you, do not make them ask questions. Don't make them ask anything aside from, should I hire this person, yes or no? So if you submit something and it makes them ask questions, don't do that. Comic Legends, how much time was given to complete a character in the movie industry? Um, you know, the that really depends on the character. It's really hard to say. You know, on average, you can you can expect somewhere around a month, a month, sometimes more. How many revisions are done on a model? Uh, so many people involved. How do you know what feedback to follow when you have conflicting fee feedback from your superiors? Well, hopefully you have one superior whose feedback you're specifically following. Ooh, what's up? Dark mode. Um, hopefully you just have one superior. So I don't. That's a that's a tough one. You know, 
Timelines are variable on project. That's really, I think, if you've worked in many projects before, you'll know that, that timelines are are variable on project. And, and the artists will take as much time as you will give them, usually. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, especially if there's, if they're perfectionists, they'll take as many hours and as many days and weeks as you'll give them. But for something highly detailed in the game industry, I think something around 30, to 30, you know, 25, 20 to 30 working days can be um, a goal to shoot for. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to time yourself while you're getting ready and uh, you know wanting to see what um, if you're living up to that, I guess uh, that's a good that's a good bar to shoot for is is um, shoot for thirty days, thirty working days, which is about a month and a half. Uh, opening up my Photoshop here because I'm getting some questions about the about the uh, aspect ratio. So what I'm doing with the aspect ratio, the reason I went to that three to one is because this is what I'm working in. Um, this um, is a format that I'm working in for all of my images here of my fan art six challenge that I'm working on. So Bosk is one character that I've been working on and Samus for the capital S is another character I've been working on. So that's why I changed the document size to be something that is more um, indicative of that, so that I'm actually already seeing what um, what the final composition will look like. And I'm more or less working in the final composition. At that point, I'm treating it like it's it's an illustration. Yes. Will I be making my own textures? I'll be doing, um, I'll probably be doing more uh, paint over stuff. So all the textures in these two are, are just paint overs. So this one will be added to the group uh, at some point, And then that Bosque will also be added to the group. That one's a little bit more behind uh, where we are right now, but I can, I can show you guys that as well. We have about 30 minutes, just a little less than 30 minutes. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please, please, please ask them. Uh, I would love to hear comments, questions, you know, things you're interested in, things about Noman, whatever that, whatever it is, uh, go ahead and ask those questions because now's a good time. Ooh, that's kind of a nice color for his head. I'm going to open that up. For some reason, it seems to be, there's a different material. Is that different material? Aha, uh -huh. see I filled it with a material at some point. So I'm gonna turn on material. I'm gonna fill it with that clear material. And then I'll go back to this. Well, I do a vote on my characters on social media. It's definitely not something I had, pl oh, how did I choose them? Yes, I've already chosen them. Uh, I did it on my personal Instagram a couple months ago, about a month and a half ago. Um, and so I've been, um, just kind of working on my own with it. So I have a couple that I might, one that I might still swap out. Oh, I think I just filled that again. Okay, good. One that I might swap out, um, because I'm not a hundred percent set on them. Uh, but the last one I'm definitely set on. What am I doing? Oh, that's right. I was filling this color. There we go. So this is Bosk. We worked on this guy last week. We basically re-sculpted his head last week. We gave him a mouth so that we could add teeth there later. Uh, and then started sculpting his costume. So another kind of character for us to work on. Have I retopped any of the models? Uh, no, but that's not really the goal of what I'm doing. Once I complete this, I do have a larger... I want to try to get through this Fan Art 6 as fast as possible because I don't want to have a, a 
a product, you know, something that I'm not super happy with. Looks like I accidentally just hit close screen share, so I'm going to reclick that. Um, I don't want to have, you know, a um, I don't want to have this hang around forever, right? I don't want to have this project looming over me, so I'm trying to get this one. And this will be a big project for me uh, that I want to kind of slowly tinker on over time. And this is, if you guys have you guys have been here before, you might have seen it. But it is a Jaeger, uh, and, and I want to make a kaiju, at least one kaiju. So this is sort of like a demon-y kaiju that I was working on. Uh, but I really want to work on... I don't know many of those folders. Interesting. Uh, this kaiju, a Jaeger. Why are those not showing? There we go. But I want to work on this kaiju. I keep saying kaiju. That's not the right word. I want to work on this Jaeger and uh, do a full pass on it. This is a this is kind of a design sculpt, but I want to do a full pass on this kaiju. I keep saying it wow this jaeger and have it fighting a kaiju and uh you know maybe play with some ideas of uh, potential fight scenes pay, you know, make this a big thing and, and do the full the full experience right you know them fighting each other uh you know potentially having you know some buildings in here where they're kind of fighting each other um and doing this kind of a thing this is all kit bash work so it's not necessarily where it should be but um been slowly kind of working on this off and on you know doing something like this a little gypsy danger inspiration for sure but doing something like this that would be a full build and i would love to do um uh one of the first i think somebody mentioned this before and i think it's what it was chris robson i think is what it is uh but there was a, a older website called 3d palace and 3D Palace used to do these 3DS Max modeling tutorials where they would take Warhammer and they would take all these things and um, they would build everything like to scale. So they would do like these massive, massive um, like mechs, mechs and buildings down to the point where you could see like the little, the little handrails where the people that would work on them would walk on. And this for me is a project that I would love to do to that level. Where like, you know, I'll, I'll take it back to, to this one. That's Bosk's foot. That's the wrong foot. But like, let's say we had like a, a dude. I think I have a dude here. But like, if a character is like this tall, I'll, I'll duplicate him and put him down like at the foot. Just so we can have that as an example. You can kind of see him. Okay. And then like here. Like, let's say this is the height of this. Jaeger and this is the height of a person like I would want to see like where they work on this thing where they crawl on this thing like are there like little like ladders where they can actually like move around on them um, that would be a ton of work but I think it would be a really fun project to do to like have this fully built uh, Jaeger and then as far as the the kaijus are concerned like somebody's asking how do I d imagine it being um the thing with the, that these proportions, I think you're asking what it, what it would be like for this creature to to move. Uh, what I would click in from YouTube is asking that um, if you've ever done animation or a good way to do posing. Actually, if Brian is still watching, you'll probably get a kick out of this. But uh, Brian used to recommend that we would have he taught a, a creature class, but you need to like embody the creature. You need to get up and you need to do what you imagine the creature would be doing. Uh, so I would probably be all knees and elbows in this character, like, you know, knees up and like kind of like crawling and like, you know, very like crawling, like like pale man from like, uh, what's that called? Like uh, Pan's Labyrinth, where like reaching around something and pulling and like imagining in these buildings. That's not the right one, but this one, I think. Uh, no, it was this one. Imagining in the buildings if this creature is like kind of starting to crawl around. Well, no, actually, I want this one. There we go. They they might like you know like put these like legs 
up and like grabbing into the side of a building. I'll try to use the edge of the, the frame here. Oh my, like, yeah, like grabbing into the side of the frame and like crushing bits of the building as it like pulls itself through um, for a, a really lanky character. So I think that's kind of the, the way that I would imagine that that going. Yeah, get your body into it. Jared's right. You got to get your body into it. You got to, you got to like embody it. I, there's definitely times when you're doing poses, like even like doing this poses, pose, you know, sort of this weird ninja -y split pose. Um, definitely, there's moments where I'm doing that pose. I think I died to mesh this into one. Yeah, I did. Cool. So this, you know, standing and like grabbing a tube. I don't have any tubes around me, but grabbing like a tube or like a lightsaber at home and like, what does that look like? How you're holding this thing, you know, trying to, trying to kind of get that, that in there. But for me, this is on art jam. At some point I want us to get into this project. So a big project that would include retopology that would include, um, you know, texturing that would include little detail stuff that would include lighting and rendering and all that, that fun stuff. So, uh, that would be a really fun one. And then maybe some in that would be uh, a couple, uh, maybe rigging. I don't think I would really rig it, but I would probably pose it to look like it's rigged. And then um, final illustration and compositing and doing all that kind of stuff. So uh, no, Cleegan uh, from YouTube, it is not a, uh, it is not, or Cleegan from YouTube is not a, a, from Pacific Rim. It's just kind of a weird demon that I made. I don't think it's from Pacific Rim, at least, not that I know of. So I would probably bring in some of those. I've also done some, um, you know, uh, things that we could bring in for that. You know, it could do like a, a King Kong thing. I've been slowly, slowly, slowly. Yes, it's me. Hi, buddy, Val Valen. Um, I, I uh, have been slowly working on like a, this for like what i thought would be king kong in reality it wasn't king kong before rampage was announced i was working on my own versions of lizzie and george and uh i don't remember the other one but i think it's ralph is the the wolf so kind of working on all these so i've been wanting to do a large kaiju um creature thing for quite a while and i just haven't really um gotten the stamina to do it yet so for some reason my zbrush oh it's trying to load a tool that's why so yeah these things are pretty fun i love doing these types of characters but yeah this is one i'm, I'm that's boss but this is one i'm definitely looking forward to getting into you know this is the like running fight scene move where it's like maybe it's like your this thing if i get that sword so it's like gleaming right got a little gleam off the sword which it wouldn't right now but like this kind of a thing yeah he's got a big thick neck right he's got like the big uh you got to protect that thing that was one of the things that i always thought was interesting in uh in a lot of these characters is your uh get out of the way get this little dude and this guy out of the way you got to protect that head if they're these if your pilots are in this head, you don't want that thing to get knocked off. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, I designed and sculpted both of these. So, obviously, using inspiration from inspiration, obvious inspiration is obvious from Pacific Rim and uh, you know things like Diablo and and kaiju's and stuff like that. So, definitely working on both of those. Um, but it's a project I'm going to get back into at some point for sure. This is like a million sub tools just like shoved into each other. So if you're wondering if there's a correct way to do concept in 3D. There is not. Even the visor is too. So yeah, we'll get to that at some point for the rest of the today though. Kind of just showing you guys a little bit of sneak peeks for future things. Uh, I'm going to be posing Samus probably, you know, hopefully over the, this coming week, if I can get some free time, uh, we'll get into, get into that so I can finalize this one and then we'll be, uh, finalizing Bosk and then moving on to some other characters. Um, that, uh, that'll be fun. And one of them I think will be not super challenging and should be pretty fun. Um, 
hopefully just a quick fun one um yeah We have about 15 minutes left in this art jam. And thank you guys so much, especially everybody on YouTube, especially everybody on Facebook who's been chiming in. This is our first time simul streaming, multi-streaming uh, to every platform. So it's awesome that you guys have been here. Uh, very happy to, to have more people watching and to have more people participating. Uh, we'll definitely look to figure out how we can get cross chat happening so everybody can chat. It sounds like there's some bots that can do that for us, which will be great. Uh, and again, always nice to have, always nice to have more people here, more conversation. So. For a second. All right. Well, if you guys uh, don't have any other last questions for the last 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to just kind of keep working away and bouncing back and forth between these projects because I like to work on multiple projects at one time. So now that Samus is kind of in a pose ready state for me, uh, you know, I think that I can maybe just do a little bit of polish on this. This I'll, I'll typically sculpt in, in this situation. I will um, uh, pose the hands and, and sometimes even sculpt the finals of the hands when they're done being posed. Uh, but uh, before you guys and you guys leave, please, 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 pulling over our, our Instagram here. Uh, we have a event tomorrow called Climbing the 12 Temples for Modeling for Look Dev uh, with Letitia and Vic, Letitia Gillette and Victor Hugo. Um, they're showing some awesome stuff from their personal collaborative pipeline. And they're working on some of these stylized characters. Uh, Check it out. It will be on our Twitch channel from 7.30 to 9.30 Pacific time. So if you want to check out that event, check that out. Uh, Letitia is amazing. Victor is awesome. Uh, Letitia is actually a Nomen alum like me. So if you're interested in kind of seeing what she has done again, please check this out tomorrow at 7.30 Pacific. And it looks like there's some links coming up oh yes thank you very much miranda for posting that as well uh we also have a launching careers uh tomorrow or sorry on friday launching careers a conversation with our placement director oh hi uh we'll be having that tomorrow on friday um if you're interested about conversation with our placement director how placement works at nomen um Come, come and stop by our Twitch stream on Friday, and we'll be talking with Shannon Wiggins, who's our placement director, about how we have such a high placement rate and how so many of our uh, alumni get placed, and also how that works within Nomen. So if you attend a full-time Nomen program, what you can look to expect. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow, I'll pull both of these over so they can be, they can be on at the same time. We have our uh, event tomorrow. Sponsored by Lenovo with Letitia and Gillette and Victor Hugo uh, talking about modeling stylized characters um, and our conversation with our placement director on Friday. So uh, all of those will be on our Twitch channel. So please, please, please come by and take a look. I think that there's some super interesting stuff there that you guys will get a kick out of. So, yeah. Right on. Well, I'm going to work on Samus here for a little bit uh, in, in relative silence because I've been talking for almost two hours and 50 minutes and my brain and voice definitely need a little bit of a break. But uh, I'll be here for just a little longer. I feel like we need some music. Unfortunately, there's all that royalty-free, or if we use popular music, it'll uh, mute the streams sometimes, especially if you want to watch a later video of it, which there are later, there are recorded videos on Twitch currently. Um, so if you're interested in more of these, check those out there.
Uh, Armando is asking, what do I personally respond to well in a character portfolio? Uh, is that a character art portfolio, Armando? Character design. Um, what do I look for? I look for um, something that really stands out. Like I look for um, you know, if you can do redesign, you know, if you want to see first off that you can make something based off of a con piece of concept art, right? That's you know, especially if you're coming into a junior mid-level position, the bulk of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to be handed, um, you're going to be handed concept art. So I want to see that you can make something from concept art. That's a requirement for me. Um, design for me, showing off your design skills is nice, but it's, you know, as a character artist, it's 0% of the job, especially at the junior levels. It's not important. Um, what else? I want to see some range. You know, I want to see or or expertise in a single type of thing. Um. You need to show me that you can do the full pipeline, that you understand the full pipeline. If you're doing a game, if you're doing character artist, which I'm assuming is game artist, um, you need to show me something in engine. It can be Marmoset. Marmoset's fine. But um, you need to show me something in engine. You need to show me, I want to see some of your textures. I want to, just, I want to see that you understand the modern game workflow. I want to see that you understand PBR. I want to under see that you understand, um, you know, just how things. I just, I just want to see that. Uh, I don't need to see more than five pieces. You have a bigger portfolio, and you're you know you're a professional with a lot of work. Then, then yeah, of course I'll take a look at more than five pieces. But like, I don't need to see any. So yeah, I think it's um, I respond to well well to that. I respond well to just I respond well to stuff that's well done. You know, if something's really well done and I can see the craftsmanship and the time in it, that's what I respond to. You know, that's like a cop out answer. Like, oh yeah, of course you respond to things that are well done, but like it's the truth. Definitely quality over quantity in a portfolio. I would rather see one amazing character than 20 crappy characters. I'm running out of disk space because I've opened so many files and my undos limited. So that is probably a signal for me to save this. Hopefully it doesn't crash. If it does crash, I'm not going to reboot up the stream in case you guys are wondering. Um, let's see, we've got a question from 
Zell DGW. Any tips for a friend of mine? Been he's been learning Blender for a month now, and wants to make environment props. Um. Okay. Environment props. Environment props are an easy thing to to um, practice because they're all over. They're everywhere, right? Yeah. Environment props are simple um, because you can just pick up something. You know, I have my iPhone here, right? Model an iPhone. Model a chair. Model a desk. Model a table. Model model your kitchen, right? Model those elements that are uh, in your home because there's no reason to not, right? It's kind of one of those things where it's like um, if you have all this stuff around you, it's not really that difficult to find things to make. It's just choosing things to make at that point. So choose something to make. Um, So if he's wanting to make an environment and make environment props, uh, one of the things we recommend for, you know, uh, students wanting to apply to Nomen, for example, as we, and they're learning 3D, is make your room, right? Make your, the room, make your room, make your kitchen, make your living room, make your house. Um, something that's easy that you have access to, that you have unlimited reference to, uh, do that, right? So it's easy to find stuff for that. Now, perhaps, are, sorry, Buddy Valen, I didn't mean to insinuate that props are easy to make they're easy to find reference for because there's so many right uh that's i I guess that's more what i'm saying um so yeah i think that's what i would recommend is find something in your house and make it right even something as simple as this like this is a simple wacom holder right you know this goes like this make a pen and make a wacom holder Make a bookshelf, make some books, um, make a candle. I'm just looking around at things I have. So the things that they might have or he might have is it might be different depending on what's around him. But um, yeah, so I'd recommend that kind of stuff for sure. All righty, uh, that is going to be the end of our art jam today. Thank you again so much, everybody who's uh, came to visit and came to say hi on on Twitch and as well as YouTube and as well as Facebook. Much appreciated. Um, thank you again, everybody, and we will see you here next week. Have a great rest of your week.